everyone in the Cursed Princess Club sat in silence, eager to hear the story of Prez's curse. This included those who had never heard the story before, as well as those who already knew it well. Gwen, I'm very sorry for not telling you about my curse sooner. I meant to, but it's not an easy story for me to tell. So, here we go. This story begins in my home of the Polygon Kingdom. As the eldest daughter of my family, I wasn't just a good girl. I was practically perfect. My parents were endlessly pleased that I turned out to be everything I was supposed to be. Smart, obedient, and easy on the eyes. For these were traits that would attract many eager suitors. After much vetting, it was decided that on my 21st birthday, I would marry the eldest prince of the lavishly powerful Monochrome Kingdom. Darling Calpurnia, You've always excelled at everything we've asked of you. Now it is time for the most important task of your life. Can you do this for us and for your kingdom? Yes, mother. Yes, father. As I grew older, I began to feel more and more unwell for some reason. All the color began to drain from my vision to my dismay though my mother didn't seem too concerned. Why, your eyes must be calibrating themselves for your new life with the monochrome prince. How diligent you are. But as more months passed, I lost my appetite and developed a persistent stomach ache. Eventually, my parents decided to keep me on permanent bed rest in the infirmary. They were getting desperate to cure whatever was ailing me in time for the wedding. Hello? I'm Asa, your nurse. I'll be handling your daily regimen from here on. Ah, thank you. So, I heard that you haven't been feeling well for quite some time, your highness. Yes. It's a persistent and mysterious illness. But I need to be fully recovered before my wedding later this year. Hmm. <gasps> hmm. Is there a basis uh? for your invasive staring, or shall I scream for the guards? What? No, no, I'm sorry, Your Highness. It's just that, uh, well, I'm no doctor, but I don't think you have a severe, mysterious illness. What? I think you're just in desperate need for some fresh air and sunlight. Would you be up for going on a stroll with me? And thus began my series of daily walks through the park with Asa. So I take it you don't get to go out much, Your Highness? There's always a never-ending list of duties to complete or topics to study. I've simply never had time for many leisurely activities inside or outside of our palace. I'm sorry. That sounds like a very tough life. There's no need to patronize me, Nurse Asa. You help people with real ailments and curses every day. I'm honestly very envious of that. Princesses never have to experience a tough day in their life. So I feel like the very least we can do is not complain about our duties and minor health issues. I'm not sure about that, Your Highness. I'm from the Oval Kingdom originally, but I've traveled and worked in the infirmaries of several kingdoms. And I've definitely seen some princesses afflicted with grave illnesses and curses. But it's seen as a source of shame for their kingdom, so they're always forced to mask any defects, or are hidden away from society entirely. Or far worse than that. I've even heard rumors of a princess born with the curse to occasionally foresee omens of misfortune. She's held in captivity by her own kingdom, utilized as nothing more than a private tool for their own prosperity and profit, as well as by certain wealthy circles within the black market. It's people like her who need help and care the most, but I can't reach them. So, I don't blame any princess who complains or takes any advantage they can to help themselves. I think it should happen a lot more. <sighs> ah, but there are wonderful things about the outside world too, your highness. <laughs> uh, like- Papa Asa! Papa, Papa Asa! Asa! Huh? Hey, wait up! You guys! You have quite a large, diverse horde of offspring. <laughs> How could you possibly think I fathered all these children? I volunteer at one of the local orphanages during my free time. <laughs> And the orphanage has been overfilled, so these four buddies have been staying at my house lately. Papa Asa, are you playing in the park too? I'm hungry. 
Make us your apple bread pudding! Well, my job right now is to take care of Miss Calpurnia, so... Ow! <gasps> your Highness! Is your stomach hurting again? No, I think I'm just hungry too. After that day, I began spending more time with Asa and his children from the orphanage. It was there that I first learned how to cook. Yay! Good job! Hugh did most of it. That the most fun things to do don't actually cost much money. Nice one! Thanks! <laughs> no! <laughs> Guess luck was on my side this time. And that I could actually <laughs> laugh until I cried. A few months later. Is this a present? For me? I know it's still a little early for your birthday, but I wanted to give you this. Please open it later when you're alone. Okay. Thank you, Asa. Maybe it was the fresh air. Or maybe it was the bread pudding. Whatever Asa was doing was working. And my world was starting to look vibrant and colorful again. I was finally feeling better. But that also meant... Wow. You're even lovelier in person, Princess Calpurnia. The Prince of the Monochrome Kingdom! What brings you here to our palace? Please, call me Prince Whitney. It's almost time for you two to get married, dear. So we figured since you've been feeling better, we'd invite Prince Whitney over so you two can become better acquainted. That sounds lovely. <sighs> Finally. A second alone this evening. Feigning laughter is so much harder once I've experienced the real thing. I told Prince Whitney I needed to use the ladies' room, but I could just really use a comforting note from Asa right now. Dear Calpurnia, It's usually the birthday girl who gets to make a wish, but please forgive me for selfishly making one instead. I wish for you to call off your betrothal to the monochrome prince, and choose me instead because I've fallen deeply in love with you. I know, it's delusional to even ask a princess to be with a poor man such as myself, but if there is any chance at all, please accept this necklace. It's my family's heirloom from the Oval Kingdom. <sighs> Asa. All I could think at that moment was, I should be happy. He was the most wonderful and caring man I've ever met, and being around him has changed my life. But for some reason, ugh, my stomach pain just doubled. Why were these the only kinds of opportunities ever afforded to me? What do you have there? <gasps> Prince Whitney! At that moment, I couldn't help but remember what Asa said. I don't blame any princesses who take any advantage they can to help themselves. It's a love letter from someone else, so I'm sorry, Prince Whitney, but I cannot marry you! Is that so? What a rotten, deceitful woman you turned out to be. Tell me, who was that letter from? It, it was from the nurse who cared for me. Oh, well, I think we could work around that. That's kinda hot. Um, just checking, but you do know that men can be nurses too, right? What?! You know what? I'm fine with it. So let's arrange a little date with you and your lover boy, where I can give my best regards. As the night carried on, Press continued telling the story of her past. The next evening held the greatest regrets of my life. Regrets? Wait, back during the slumber party. Press is going to marry a poor man? Live in a one-bedroom house with a white picket fence, and have four children. Hey! Doesn't that kind of sound like what you- Oh, oh my god! I'm so sorry! I didn't know what I was thinking! And when I tried to ask her about her curse... Um, Prez? What would you do if you had your curse removed for 24 hours? I can't take back the things I've done. I can only take my experiences and try to do something good with them. Just what happened that night? So, 
the night after the monochrome prince confronted me about Asa. Calpurnia? I received your message and ran here as soon as my shift at the infirmary was over. I'm happy you wanted to see me, especially after the letter I sent you. I'm happy to see you too, Asa. You're wearing the necklace I gave you! Wow, you look absolutely stunning. Can't say the same about you, though. Huh? Who's there? So this is my competition? Unbelievable. This is the least sexy nurse I've ever seen. What? Uh, Calpurnia? What's going on here? Asa quickly realized that the monochrome prince had arranged this meeting with ill intentions in mind, and that I had knowingly lured him here. Like the rotten, deceitful woman I truly was. But what could I possibly do to stop it? My only skill in life was to do exactly what was told of me. A man who tries to steal a prince's fiance isn't a man at all, but an insect. And insects deserve to be squashed! Prince Whitney, please! Stop! Nothing in my life was what I actually wanted. So then why? Why was I going along with any of it? Asa! Whoops. Oh my god, Calpurnia! Why? Why would you- Because you're a father of four children who love you, and I don't want to marry anyone. Once again, you realize those aren't my actual children, right? C Calpurnia? C can you hear me? Wait, a syringe? What did you stab her with? Well, it was obviously meant for you, dummy. It was going to create a very convenient way of disposing of you. But it looks like I'll just have to do it with my own two hands now. <laughs> Earlier that day, Prince Whitney had secretly concocted a plan of revenge towards the man he believed was stealing his fiance. He sent his royal servant to one of the rare curse dealers on the black market. Fetched me a cursed <laughs> serum to transform a man into a common house spider. He would inject him with the curse <laughs> and crush him under his foot with no trace of his body. It would be the perfect murder. But unbeknownst to the prince, his servant didn't pick the correct transformation curse. Rabbit? Tiger? Bird? Where's Spider? Can hope you find something, old man. Uh, where's Spider? Oh, sure. Let me grab it for you. Why, thank you, lad. There you are, you little bugger. <laughs> so when the curse began to take effect after a few seconds... Die! Uh -huh. It wasn't exactly what the prince had in mind. Ah! The next morning, I woke up on the floor. I could only vaguely recall brief flashes of the past night. Huh? But when I looked around in a panic, I realized... Asa? Asa! Asa! Where are you? Oh my god! <clears throat> Your biggest regret was that you killed Asa? Oh, no, no. He was completely fine. He hid inside an air vent and got stuck in there all night. Oh, phew. So the monochrome prince was fine too? Um, yeah. No. I ate him. Uh, you what? Not long after I woke up, I felt something lodged in my throat. I spat out two monochrome earrings and a chunk of black silk necktie. I just swallowed him whole, though, like much of the rest of the night, I only recall short, vague memories. So, yep, that's my big regret. I ate an entire man. Can you still treat me the same knowing that? It's no biggie. Y yeah it wasn't in your control. Why aren't either of you looking me in the eye anymore, then? Wait a second. So you turn into a giant were-spider, like, once a month under a full moon? That can't be true. Two months ago under a full moon, we all played Shadow Tag and ate s'mores. And I'm pretty sure it was your idea. Um, well, about that. The were-spider curse works by latching onto some monthly phase at the time it was activated. But, instead of a phase of the moon, 
It latched onto a different time of the month that I was on that night, if you get what I mean. In other words, I turn into a giant, ravenous, deadly spider once a month during my period. Oh. Gross. I just told you that I ate my ex-fiancé, but that's what you're grossed out by? Uh, sorry. Saffron, how could you not have known about Prez's curse up until now? Why did you think we shut things down every month? I tried to tell him, but every time I started talking about my period, he'd cover his ears I'm and- I'm sorry! I wasn't raised around many girls! <sighs> Can we maybe talk about something else, please? Um, I would like to hear the rest of your story, actually. Like, what happened to you and Asa? Oh, right. Well, both families soon heard of what unfolded that night. Because there was so much violence, scandal, and shame on both sides, it was ultimately decided that the only way to keep peace between both kingdoms was to simply cover everything up and agree to never speak of it again. But the one condition was that I, the unwed, cursed princess with the murder to my name, was to be banished permanently from my kingdom. But in a moment of compassion, my father made secret arrangements for me to live in his abandoned vacation home in the forest of some quaint little kingdom. It's okay, darling. This is why we have multiple daughters, in case one of them commits murder. And just between you and me, that prince seemed like a butt nugget anyway. Before I left forever, I met Asa in the park once more to return his family heirloom. Here, you deserve someone far better than me anyway. You helped me so much, and in return, I led you on and dragged you into my awful, regrettable actions that almost got you killed. Honestly, that night you wore it, I had never seen you be more courageous, more honest. I don't want to marry anyone. Or more beautiful. So please, don't regret getting me involved. And if that necklace helps you continue living with courage and honesty, then please keep it. Um, yeah, I think I'll just be living in shame from now on. I've kind of lost everything. Well, that might be a good thing, Calpurnia. Maybe when you lose everything, it's the perfect opportunity to find out what you truly want to do. What I truly want to do? Asa's words kept echoing in my head as I began my journey out of the Polygon Kingdom. Your Highness, my name is Curtis. Your father has entrusted me with your care, and I... Hello? Your Highness? I only ever knew how to do what others wanted. What did I truly want to do? I think I always secretly wanted to be someone like Asa. Someone who helps people but I could never do the things he does. Especially now. Who could I possibly help as a cursed princess? Rumors of a princess born with the curse to occasionally foresee omens of misfortune. Held in captivity by her own kingdom. Utilized as nothing more than a tool. It's people like her who need help and care the most, but I can't reach. For the first time in my life, I began planning my own future, and became lost in thought for the rest of the trip. The perfect opportunity, huh? Here we are, Your Highness. Welcome to your new home. Mm, this poor girl's been through so much lately. I fear her illness will return in full force. Your Highness, please know that I am here to help you with anything you need at all. I hope that you aren't feeling too sad about your new arrangements. Feeling sad? There's no time for that, Curtis. There's a princess that needs to be saved. But I can't do it unless I can be strong. Will you help me, Curtis? Will you help me become strong? Uh, of course, Your Highness. 